Gaelic football on Off the Ball. With AIB, proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. Yeah, well, if any time between uh, half four and half five at Croker on Saturday, uh, Tyrone need to summon some spirit and courage to get over the battle with Kerry. And maybe um, this man on the big screen uh, at the game might help. Ryan McMenamin, how are you? Oh, all the best, Johnny, the best. It's giving you a good, that's giving you a good motivational start to this interview anyway. <laughs> Oh, it has, it has, it definitely. See, it's definitely given me a lift. You know, I haven't heard that in a long time, Nick, you know, so I'm good about myself now, you know. I can. <laughs> what have you been up to since Cavan and Down? Yeah, um, look, on the, on the day we were beat by the better team, just, you, we beat them in the league earlier on, and I think they'd, I think they'd turned it around now with a, with a few injuries with with Big Paddy being out and look on on the day you we didn't take your chances and we were like we were beating you you just move on with it. It's it's tough but you move on with it. Why did you make it down? Um look I thought they were very good. They were probably the they were defensively well set up was what we were expecting and we expected that they were just that they were gonna break on the counter all the time and we probably did what we we told the boys not to do. We knew they were going to get fifteen inside the forty-five and, and break our pace. And we just give we just give them too many opportunities. We missed a couple of frees and marks in the first half that would have left us going even. And then, as I said, when you don't take your chances playing against a mass defence, uh, you're you're always going to struggle. And, and unfortunately, we didn't take them. Um, we, we'll get to the, the, this weekend's action now. Just, just on that point, there has been a lot of debate about, you know, particularly, I know they're kind of the fall guys, Roscommon, just the way that the, the possession football was. It, does the game itself need any tinkering rules? Why are you happy enough that it's just in a, in a kind of a space of evolution? Yes, well, really, it depends. A lot of it, people are, may have mentioned about a shot clock, but mm. if the defensive team knows there's a shot clock, they're going to they're gonna drop back in again t- inside the 45. Um, teams can play with you can leave men up I know Calvin have been trying to leave two three players up all year and we're trying to be progressive um, and a lot comes on the defensive team if they want to push out and like if they can back themselves the press man v man on on the on the opposition teams you know not to let them get uh, not to let them get see keep the ball and have soft possession all the time, you know. But look, I I definitely do think there is merit. People don't want to see the ball being kept maybe for six, seven minutes, and maybe Russ Common did what they had to do. They were playing against Dublin, who probably they've never beaten a championship match, and you have to see where every team comes from. And I think uh, it's kind of hard, maybe when you're not involved in it, maybe looking from the outside, you you can kind of think maybe, oh well, see that's the way we should play, and that's what you should play. But then when you're then inside looking out. You can't go right. We have to do everything to get a result here. And if you don't get a result, a lot of the players and management nowadays are crucified over social media. And then if, when they do win and they do something well, they still can get crucified as well if, if they're not playing in the right way for the perceived critics or the mm. perceived youth. But look, there's there's a right, and I don't, I don't think there's no right or wrong answer. It's just you can be a bit braver if you want, you know, and it comes down to the coaching and, and, and the mindset of the management. Put it to you this way: Would you prefer to be playing now or when you started? Um, I'll tell you, it's more, it's more technical now. It's more tactical. When I, when I started, I mean, there was a big uproar. Uh, the third man midfielder. What mm. you come? What's the third man? There were. I mean, reading the papers, there was. It's, it's, it's going to destroy the game. The third man coming out, and usually a cornerback would run up the field and score the point, and you'd hear the crowd saying, "I well, that's what you get for taking a man out the field." And I think it does. It does. Uh, the game is evolving. Um, you'll go through your peaks and throcks with it, and you, you look back at the noughties. Then, likewise, when you look back at the seventies and eighties, there was a lot of catch and kick, and maybe there wasn't a lot of tactical awareness going on, but a lot. It, it is more tactical and I can't I can't say I've enjoyed because I've, I've started playing in the 90s and I've finished up playing nearly at the 20s um, so I've seen everything you know so um, I have to say I enjoyed playing and I enjoyed playing near the end of the career as much as enjoyed playing at the start of the career but there's definitely been a, a, a more of an emphasis on 
on the tactics of Club On County. Yeah, I actually remember remember uh, John Mohan in 1996 when Galway had beaten Mayo in 95 and John Mohan came in and started deploying this third man midfielder and um, Galway couldn't cope with it for a couple of years up until 98. But lastly, on your own um, situation, are you enjoying going back into the kind of coaching role after your uh, stint at Fermanagh? Yeah, look, I definitely enjoy the coaching. It's probably the closest you're going to get playing to a high level again. Mm. And- it doesn't take away from playing, and uh, you know. But no, look, I've I've been I've been lucky enough that I've I've been asked to go in by McKay for I've spent I've spent two great years with him, and had my own experience with Fermanagh. But no, I've I've really enjoyed it, and uh, I've really seen the. It's great to get involved with other counties, and it's great to put yourself outside the comfort zone. As I said, I've made more friends in the last couple of years outside outside my own county and outside my own boundaries. You know, which is and I've learnt a lot more from the football as well and coaching. But no, I've really enjoyed it, and and for me, it's been an eye opener, and um, and it's just a drive, and maybe it could be a thing that could wear you down a lot. And you're a big cuddly bear at the end of it all. Big cuddly what? A big cuddly teddy bear at the end of it all. Oh well, I, I, I don't have that. I have a big, I have a big cuddly teddy bear at the house. It's a Bernese mountain dog, and I'm seeing it running about here, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's trying, it's trying to destroy the back lawn here, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's doing its best. I, I think there's a there's a documentary in that alone. Um, I just have to give a mention here. G- Gaelic football on off the ball is in partnership with AIB, proud sponsor of the GA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. Um, the lads just doing the research today, and you can kind of um, maybe fill me in a little bit on this, Ryan. Is it true that we're going back here? I think to 1997, around about the era we we're just talking about, where you lads—I don't—I think you might have been overage at this stage. But Tyrone beat Kerry in a minor semi-final um, that went to the wire into a replay, and was that almost like some sort of a, um, a, a platform for a belief seeping in at last in sort of Tyrone football? Yeah, look, I think uh, that '97 team. Um, there would have been three three players on it from my own club. Um, there would have been Joe Campbell, Kevin O'Brien, and and the late Paul McGear. Mm. And I, I think I mean going down that there was real momentum behind the team at that time going down that they won it because a for Paul's memory and b because we had a real good batch of players going down. And uh, I mean drawing the game and they went down won the replay. Um, and it probably did give a momentum that the boys knew that we we could beat Kerry and f- for for us for years looking in that Kerry were always a team that I think maybe a lot of the memories of, from the 86 final was still soaring a lot of people mm. as well like we were we were in control of the game until maybe they were up until midway through the second half and then Kerry turned on the burners then you know but it definitely was a start probably for Tyrone um, I don't think Kerry realised it but there was a lot of the lads that played on on that team, they were there in the first semi-final. We beat Kerry, and then they were they were still between 03, 05, 08, You know, so I, I definitely didn't give Tyrone a spur because the lads. I think a lot of lads went on then when they went back to back all Ireland under twenty ones. You know, so so the twi- you start off then twenty years ago. Um, the the day of the infamous puke football obviously Toronto thirteen points uh, Kerry six and uh, the the Irish Times said uh, at the time it's funny looking back now Kerry were introduced to new age as Toronto players swarmed around them in possession tackling from the front bunching the middle and counter attacking at pace Pat Spillane called it puke football no sour grapes there but his county had no answer uh, Toronto went on to win their first All Ireland senior title and the game would never be the same again what's your memory. Um, my memory is waking up. I didn't think it was that bad of a game. Mm-hmm. I, woke up the, I woke up the next morning. I, I stayed down in Dublin, believe it or not, because we knew there were five weeks to the final. You were you were allowed to go out and enjoy yourself, and we had a club champ because it was we had, to, we had a club championship maybe the following week or the week after. So we had to play we had to play a club championship match. Um, but I mean, waking up and then reading the papers, and I couldn't believe <laughs> I couldn't believe the negativity going on. I was kind of saying to myself, "Was it that bad of a game? Were we that bad?" And I think, or is it a slightly anti ulster bias? Like, well, I'm, I don't. I, I don't because we were. I think we were that just that pump for the game. There was no real tactics that we were going to go around and get everyone behind us for him. I think we were just that pumped. We had been. Living maybe the last, we would have been living maybe the whole of August, July, August. Once we got through for Mana in the quarterfinals, that this was the biggest game that we're ever going to play in. Like, and it was just, we were just, 
it was the only time it's one of the few times that I've been in a in a squad in a team that everyone collectively was on the same same wavelength. There was no sometimes you'd hear maybe subs maybe or men that weren't getting on maybe griping a bit but for the first time it was just a total focus on just on, on what had to be done and I think that manifests itself probably especially in the first half against Kerry it was just I don't think Kerry were expecting it but uh, we definitely knew that we had to bring a bit of mayhem to the whole thing So you missed the boat a little bit in the early 90s with the Ulster resurgence what was, to, what was that 2003 like in and like Tyrone is one county. I I I know I've a, I know a few people from there, but I, I couldn't say I know exactly the character of the county. Like, what did that mean as a Tyrone man, and and that connection that you had with the fans that time? Yeah, look, it, it probably meant everything it, because we were probably one of the last counties. Uh, Armagh had won it, Derry had won it, uh, Down had won it, Donegal had won it, and they were all neighbouring counties, Bar Down, and it was. For us, Thrones like it's a massive football county. It's a massive, just that's everything football, football, football. Um, it's talked about night and day. And um, for us, once we knew we, it was like it was not, it was, was non real experience. And I don't think um, I mean going to we're going to the homecoming in Oma, and like the streets was packed and going. And I probably given I probably give a lift to the whole county, even the youth coming through for the next twenty years that. It's something that we can create, but it was it's one of them things that Tyrone is more a monkey off the back because we'd been getting a lot of slag and a lot a lot of times that we were we were masters of the underage titles. We we're very good underage titles, and it meant then I, the exception was that if if we can win this first one, it could go on. Maybe we can get we can get more, you know, and I think and, and approve right so Well, there's plenty of Canavan chat obviously this weekend. What was two What was two thousand and five like by contrast? Um, again, it was different because uh, we'd kind of went on a roll. We'd been poor. We'd been poor in 04. And then uh, we'd been poor right up until... We hadn't been poor, but we'd been, we'd been drawing games. We drew with Calvin. We drew with Armand in the final. And then we kind of then we met Dublin. It was, it was more a roller coaster. And then it was, it was just... Um, it was just a roller coaster of events that you couldn't that you couldn't describe, and then coming back, then you had you met Armand in that semi final, which is again, it was probably one of the most intense games. Mm. You could feel it in the crowd. It was just the, the crowd were intense. Everyone was intense. It was just at that stage. It was Armand throwing Kerry. It was three fantastic teams and squads, and they were just going at each other all the time, and you. You didn't think much of the Armagh boys, they didn't think much of you, and the Kerry boys didn't think much of you, and you didn't think and vice versa, Armagh and Kerry. So we knew what was at stake because we didn't want Armagh getting the two All-Irelands and we wanted to get the second All-Ireland and Armagh wanted to get. And at the same time, Kerry was looking to crack at the both of us, I'd say, because Armagh turned them over in 2 We turned them over, Kerry in 3 and... And Kerry were the champions, and I'd, I'd say Kerry probably wanted to beat us in the final just to put a see to put a lot of stuff to bed. But unfortunately, they didn't. It's a bit of a this is your life team to this so far. But 2008, then Tyrone won 15, Kerry 14 points, and obviously Kieran Donahue, Tommy Walsh, a lot of chat in the build up. John, Justin McMahon have big days in. Uh, it's interesting just to say as well. Um, did you feed off that intensity in the crowd that you can feel in um, particular days when, uh, particularly at a full court park? Oh, definitely, definitely. You can, you can, you can feed off it surely, and the crowd going. Now you don't hear what they're saying, but <laughs> I think there's probably a side tracking. But I mean, uh, 05 Kieran Whelan coming through the middle, and he scored a point to equalise it, and he scored it. You could actually feel the ground moving because the whole thing was just erupting. And I'll never forget. I, I mean, looking up into the hill, and you could hear the whole hill because it was air kick out. You could hear the whole hill roaring, and you kind of look and you're smiling to yourself. You're kind of going, "Oh, this is this is this is just what you wanted to play football for." You know, you hear the the hill. They were just it was just a deafening noise, and then you were looking. How, how are we going to get this kick out going? Because the hell was actually, the Dubs fans were actually willing, air keeper not to kick it out. It was, it, was, it was a unique experience, but you definitely can feed off it, you know, and I really love playing in the big games because um, just there was a big crowd, big atmosphere, and uh, it's just whenever you heard the roar go up, you knew then 
you just had to do something like so. Did you did you realise then in 2012 you, you were t- you kind of hung up your boots after the you lost by ten points, Kerry? Did you realise that it's not like PTSD, but like that that when it's all over, never getting that kind of buzz back. And I know you're saying like coaching is the next thing, but that buzz back of you know feeling the ground lift below you, at Crow Park. Yeah, look, uh, that's probably why I played it on so long yeah. <laughs> at the club. I was looking at a very good club and we, 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 you we're always playing to a good level, good standard senior football. But um, no, look, definitely um, did I miss the training? I, you, I didn't miss the hard training, but I missed the training. You, sometimes as some of the boys will tell you, you can just miss being in a, in a routine, you know, and you're always going. But no, definitely uh, you didn't realise how much you enjoyed playing with the boys or, or how much you knew the boys playing as you said kind of like it's a could be like a drug like a, I went back playing over 40s a couple of years ago with Stevie O'Neill and Connor Gormley not bad not bad not bad it, it, it is a good it, I think big Sean Calvin is back tearing it up there now for the boys so but it was once you went back and playing with them it was just nice you know because you had that as a, as a sort of feeling as Oh, I know where this man's going to run here. <laughs> so I just kick it, you know. Well, I hope he still can get it, but I'm just going to kick it anyway, you know. But no, definitely. Um, but I think too, you have to real. I was always aware, probably, like it was going to end sometime, you know. And I was always very self-aware, probably the position you played in. You're always going to come up against the quickest, or you're always going to come up against the fastest. And the earlier you get, you had to get a wee bit smarter. And I knew myself that um, you can't play forever, and you kind of have to. Re- you have to realise maybe there is going to be an end game to it. It was probably one of the things that I did realise when you play a corner back. You know, there's a- <laughs> there's always there's always quicker men coming around the corner. Like. And of the corner forwards you mark, say if you meet a random sort of former rival, is he uh, does he crack a smile or does he say, "Jeez, it's your man." It's your man, Mac Miniman there. No, we crack a smile of it all. We do out of a few beers, maybe with a few of them. You know, Stephen McDonald always was. Any time we ran into him and in round through own we would. So um, I've met, I've met the star a couple of times. Don't I? So no, look, we, you kind of uh, you move on, like, and uh, you probably realise they weren't that bad, you know. <laughs> when you get yourself into that wee bubble, you know, you, you think nothing else of it. But no luck, I think, I think away from it. Uh, you know, like, I'll be working there with Mickey Graham and with Calvin, like, and he still slags me about 2001. And uh, I would have come up against him and give him a few him a few clips, although he reckoned I never got near him, you know, but I think, I think it took him a couple of times. So, um, But no, you, you, do, you just move on and... Um, but it's done in the past and I just enjoy seeing just talking about the times, you know, so. Talk to me about tomorrow, so. Ah, it's, 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 it's going to be fun it's, it's for Tyrone anyway. It's always fun when Tyrone plays Kerry and uh, I'd say the county's looking forward to it now. I think probably after Westmeath, we were lucky to uh, when John has him as the free, I was going to put your, you could put your house on it. And then they came up put a performance on, like against Donegal. I don't know where Donegal's at. Um, cool, but with Tyrone, with the way Derek Hanawan's playing at the minute, he's playing, he's probably playing the best football he's ever played for Tyrone. And when he's on that sort of form, it, it, it does give you an option. But definitely people on Tyrone are looking forward to it now. So, um, if we can, if we can get the mentality right, I think we will. I think we, I think we'll give Kerry lots of bother. If you went, if you went back to the start of this season, like what was the, I mean, what was the mindset in Tyrone among among like the likes of yourself in terms of what are the lads going to do to rebuild here and sort of reboot? Um, I tell you, at the, at the start, probably with the with the way the league went with Tyrone this year. Probably thrown. They had a wee bit of doubts in the squad. Maybe what what they were going to do. They probably knew that they needed something bigger than Dara. And they, what's been a plus maybe has probably been the form of Matty Donnelly. Like Matty's kind of he had a, he had a maybe poor start to his standards of the league. And maybe there's a few question marks, but definitely he's come this last last two three months. He's been he's been superb, you know and. Look, Manny's a he plays for the rival club up the road, but I've, I've no I've no harm in saying it. He's probably the most diligent footballer that you're going to get out there. And what he does to get himself in the shape is unbelievable, and what, and, and to keep himself. So he he's kind of come to the fore. So Throne needed all that there, and look at the same time to win any championship 
you need a bit of luck and at the minute Throne seem to be getting that luck um, from, from the free kick with Haslam even, the, even though they lost against Galway they were still in the game and the and and the league format, you know, like mm. they were still in the game. Galway didn't really put them away, and the boys would have took great momentum from that play. Maybe with thirteen players for maybe a few, for maybe over ten, even the first half of the game, and kind of character building, like. Oh, it definitely is. It definitely is. And look, you can you can go away and and probably the beauty of this tournament, the way the All Ireland tournament set up, if you lose the first game, you have another two to rectify it. And Throne probably got the way the draws worked out. I kind of fell into their lap. Well, you, you probably do get the sense as well that they they neither Fairclaw Park nor Kerry. Oh, definitely, definitely. Look, I like this. I'm sure Kerry are looking at Thrones and look, we we want to crack at them for from 2021. And at the same time, Throne are looking at them and saying, you know, do these boys have the same hunger as they had maybe back so uh, as they had last year and. It's, to me, it's to me, it's a great draw for both counties because it's got it's going to set it's going to set both counties up, and both counties know that there's going to be a big going out after. Like if Throne beat Kerry, that's Kerry out of the cohesion. Like, and if Kerry beat Throne, I think it'll be Throne out of the cohesion. And I'd say Kerry would probably did fancy their chances maybe against any of the other teams left. Kerry, Dublin, Derry. Um, or Mayo, you know. Is that a realistic thing that the hunger might not be quite what it was last year? Um, it's it's kind of it's it's hard. It's you just don't know as a player. You do everything to get to the top of the mountain, and then you know when you're beaten a final, you look at Galway, you kind of think, well, we're, we're going to do all that we get back there next year. But you do know it's a long way to get back up to the hill, and when you do want it. You're re- you're rarely thinking about next year. You're kind of thinking, well, I'm going to celebrate this here. I'm going to go this here. And um, you, you factor in a couple of things. You factor in knocks. You factor in form. And um, hunger hunger's a funny thing. Like um, again, you don't put a pass carry if they're because they have, but they haven't won an All Ireland. Like they won an All Ireland twenty two, but the previous one was fourteen. Mm. So so there so there was a gap, and for a lot of the players. This is probably a new experience of winning all Ireland's and winning this year for maybe the Kerrys and the Nottys. They they were there thereabouts near enough every year. They were oh four two thousand. So um, then they'd won two in a row. So they they had the experience of being there. Like so, it, it's just how they handled the experience of of being champions. Living in a post David Moran world and Tyrone outstanding midfield. How does the kick out strategy work tomorrow? We saw Mayo winning I mean it was a freakish game in Salt Hill with the weather, but Mayo were so comprehensively beaten in terms of possession from kick out, still won. Um can Kerry win if they get like say forty percent of the ball around midfield? Um I think I think local it's one thing getting the ball once you get it, but it's what you're gonna do mm. after. And Thrones two midfielders have been playing. They've been, they've been playing superb at the minute. Um, I don't think Kerry's is going as well. Um, more than probably a huge lift. I can see Kerry probably trying to get a lot of short away here and keeping away from Throne. But with Crow Park going, I think Throne will, Throne will be happy enough with that, and they'll they'll happy enough to dog out. See the dog out with Kerry. But look, Kerry of Shawnee O'Shea, of Clifford, of Potty O'Shea, and look at, at the minute when you look at David Clifford, you know he's probably he's, he's one of the best footballers of his generation. Anything he does is great, and any ball that's, that's going to come in him, he's he, he's going to score. Like, and that's um, but but I think Kerry, even even if they have short kickouts and even if they do the ball, they do have the players and the ball players to cause their own problems. Yeah, and like, how do you actually anticipate? We'll say Moynihan, O'Shea, Spillane, Clifford, Clifford, Ganey. How will they? How how will what will Tyrone do in terms of managing that sex set alone? Um, again, I'll, I'd say with Tyrone, Tyrone are going to be look, they're going to be looking a massive shift out of out of the top eight, the, the midfielders and the and the front six. I think how hard they work and how hard they stop getting the ball into that front three um, and how, how hard they can do that there. If, if they can swap quality ball going in and, and, and making it real, real difficult, if the ball's not going in the Clifford well, he's not going to get the ball. And I think Throne will be happy enough. I think 
I think McNamee could handle Guinea all right, although Guinea's he could he could pull it out of the fire. Mm. But it's, 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 the throne will just really put a mile. It'll be the massive answers in the front eight that if, that if they can keep the pressure up, see that see the help the fellas out in the back, and if and if they can do that there, I think we can cope all right. I'm going to get predictions for off you for the four games before that. Like it's hard to believe young Canavan, he just, he's f- nearly five years in the panel at this stage, and it feels like this could be his kind of day of deliverance nearly in terms of uh, I guess the national kind of narrative. Yeah, look, um, he's been in the panel. He's been about. I th- I've tried chasing after him at club level a couple of times. It's never it's never went well. <laughs> and he and he told me about that a couple of times as well. I remember he's, your he dad. <laughs> he, he burnt me. I uh, I don't want to talk about it. But uh, no, look, he's he's a he's a um, he's probably coming off a good club championship as well. Where where Eric won the championship. Um, he was superb in that. He he, he probably beat him. Um, my club in the semi-finals um, he had a great performance but he, he's kind of built on it from this he's, he's built on it he's had a good pre-season he's had no injuries and he's just now playing as a player full of confidence and uh, it's great to see from a throne point that he, that he can do that and it, again it takes the pressure off Dara and it takes the pressure and then you have, you have Rory in there as well who's, who's beginning to go well so throne probably have three proven scores and then the rest are all around working and if you have, if you have that there cause, because Dara's going to take two, three men they're definitely going to be watching them and it, for throne it's great to see and that he can and it, it'll, be, it'll be great to see him play see, see playing in Crook Park at this level and I'd probably at the form that he's in at the minute so it's exciting for us Everyone back in Dromore tomorrow night happy or sad? Um, I, 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 they'll be happy Beautiful and give us the result of the other three so um, I'm going to have to go Derry and then Armagh Monaghan I'm going to have to go I'll go Monaghan I'll go Monaghan and then the other one here we go this is the one we all want to know Mayo or the uh, <laughs> I'll go Mayo yeah sure if uh, Tyrone gets the last uh, four we might get you back on again for the next edition of This Is Your Life Ryan McMenamin oh thanks very much thanks very much top man <laughs> all the best Gaelic football on Off the Ball with AIB, proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more.